I've been thinking about doing a tapestry. I have this massive wall right here and it is the first thing that you see when you walk into my house. Now I feel like my baskets are overplayed. You see them all the time and I'm kind of just bored with them. And they collect a ton of dust and being in Arizona, it, it sucks. So we're gonna do a tapestry instead. I bought six yards of canvas, unopened, brand new, for $5 at my thrift store here on Fort Huachuca Post. So what I'm thinking about doing is doing a, like a hanging Persian rug look. So I love rugs and I wanna put one on my wall. Uh, okay, let's see if I can do this. what I've done so far. I cut out all my shapes that I had pre-templated um, and then I just laid them out on the canvas and our next step is going to be sewing on this base layer. I think the way that this is going to be more of like an interesting piece is by layering and layering and layering. Right now I think it currently looks really geometric maybe more modern, um, so that's not really what I'm looking for, but it's, we're getting there. Let me show you where we're at so far. That's actually red, I don't know why it looks orange. Hi, Mimi. Two-tone pink, or mauve, purple, blue, I like this blue, it has a real geometric, kind of tribally, Aztec-y looking pattern on it. And yeah, I'm gonna be attaching a border with um, little other different shapes that are gonna go on that.
Okay, so here we are, pinned. This is the end cap, and of course this is part of the center. I threaded this needle with brown thread up here, which I got from a thrift store. So everything I'm using in this project is secondhand. Um, that's why I used um, different kinds of fabric. So like this is like an upholstery fabric, this is cotton fabric, this is a knit, which is why I pinned so heavily because knit stretches and uh, will distort. So I really don't want it to do that, to distort and stuff. So uh, I pinned the heck out of it. And I think this is like a wool. So it's gonna have a lot of bulk and weight to it and it's gonna uh, feel different than just like a flat, all one fabric cotton uh, piece. So we're gonna do that. Hopefully it all lays out well as I sew. sewing on the first layer of applique and what that looks like I can show you. So this is it cut in half. Um, a few tips that I've realized is definitely pinning is a must, especially when you're working with knits that stretch, absolutely pin. The easiest fabric for me to sew on without it moving was this upholstery fabric. Um, but besides that, I mean, I pretty much pinned everything and I think that's what took so long. It took me about a day to get this done. Mind you, I have a nine month old who naps <laughs> for like about an hour a day. He, he's cutting a tooth right now. So it's like, I can't really sit down and focus and sew while he's sleeping. He's not sleeping very long right now. Um, so. Everything's tacked on, these big appliques are tacked on. Everything's kind of hairy and I'm okay with that. I'm gonna leave it kind of hairy. This is what I mean by it's hairy. It's fringy. So I'm just gonna sew over top of everything and go from there. show you what I mean. If you look at it, it's just really one dimensional. It doesn't really have a lot of depth. It looks really raw, which I'm okay with the rawness because when people make like handmade rugs, they're never perfect. So what I'm thinking on doing is putting this and sewing it onto another piece of fabric and it's hard to tell because my camera makes it look like it's the same color. But see, it's just a tone darker. And I think by having that tone darker um, underneath this fabric, I think it's going to make it look really nice. So my plan is to sew this onto this cotton fabric. And so this is a knit fabric sewing onto a cotton fabric. It's going to be tricky. It's going to be hard. I'm going to have to do a lot of pinning. And I know it's going to be a pain in the butt, but I think it's going to be worth it. Because I'm trying to use fabric that I got from the thrift store that I didn't pay a lot of money with, or pay a lot of money for. So yeah. Um, okay, so this is going to get sewn onto here. And then this will get sewn onto here. And uh, when I sew, I'm going to like tack these on, and then I'm going to do a decorative stitch with a darker color of thread to really make things pop, to, to add that just, that very 
subtle dark line. So I got everything pinned up so that I'm able to get it underneath my sewing machine and not have to like pull and pull and pull tons of fabric. I've come down to two threads that I like. Um, this I honestly, it's green, but for some reason, you know, when it's not combined together, it looks very much just like the fabric which is not really what I'm looking for. So I think I'm gonna use this yellow. I think this yellow is gonna look, it shows up on um, the blue as well as the red. So it'll be a nice thin line. I was gonna do a darker color, but I think doing something that's gonna be bright and stand out is gonna highlight my applique work. All right, so I will switch out the threads and go from there. Finally, I got the middle appliques done. Literally took me like a week, but this is only being able to work in between, you know, nap cycles of my baby. So let me show you what I did. So here are the appliques. This little guy, these little halfers, I cut them off short after I pinned them and just did a thick stitch around. Like I said, I'm not a very good sewer, but um, I think that really adds to the look though because I want it to look frayed and old and like it's been generations passed down. It's the kind of thing that I'm going for. So this is gonna be the second layer um, that I'm gonna put on. So I'm gonna do Rosa's second layer. Um, and then we're gonna keep building up these layers with more texture. Um, I figured out an idea for this spool uh, I'm gonna be doing some hand quilting on it and just really adding more and more and more dimension. So I, uh, I am pretty sure that this project is gonna take me quite a long time, but that is okay. I'm really enjoying it. I'm loving that two-tone. And see, it's not perfect. It's not perfect at all, but I think it looks really nice and I think it's gonna turn out great. All right, so Rose is next. So I cut out all my pieces and I just cut them out from my scraps. I made lots of extra pieces of this and the pink that were on the side. So I used those and I cut those out. And how I did that is I have this basic template. This is one petal. And so I made two prototypes. Each flower may, uh, takes four for petals. So I made this one first. Eh, 
I'm not that crazy about it, but I like this one. I like that it's light going to um, a tone darker and then the darkest. I think it looks really nice. So, what I'm gonna end up doing is putting this here, and then I'll have my vines, vine, and vine, and then there'll be another flower. So I need to make 10 of these babies, and this will be how they go. I have my free motion presser foot on. I have my feed dogs back here turned off so you can see. They're not, I don't know if that'll focus. They're not up, that means I can push my fabric around and it, I can manipulate it and stitch exactly where I want. Uh, so I will pin this up and I'll show you uh, how I do that. Okay, so it's pinned up and I take it over here to my machine and I'm just going to free motion quilt along this edge. Things are rounded, it's easier to free motion quilt them in my opinion rather than if you have to make an extremely straight line. I like to use like a walking foot or you're just your basic quarter inch foot with your feed dogs up. Can't explain what she released when she said Everything should be tacked down. I tack down the outside and then the inside. One more. A little sneaky blue one. So this is the fun part to me. Trying to decide where you want your petals to start. That's the center of the tapestry. These are uh, vines that I'm gonna need to uh, cut out. So that'll be our next step that we do. And so these vines are gonna be repeating. And I need, you know, this bottom part needs to line up with this part, which this will then come over here and go straight and create a linear pattern. So, in order to do that, we've got to cut out all these bad boys. I just got done cutting out all of my little vine pieces. 
Um, and right now I'm trying to decide if I want to go with a yellow background or if I want to stick with the green background. And I think my final decision is going to be the green. Um, I like that it plays nicely with the flower blue. I think it looks really good together. And so yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out uh, like a fat quarter size. This is a fat quarter. I'm going to make it roughly the same size. Pin a whole bunch of these onto there, uh, keeping in mind that I have to place them so that there's enough spacing between each piece. So uh, that'll be the tricky part. So basically, uh, we're just going to get these sewn on, cut them out again, and then I'm going to pin them onto the tapestry. Uh, along with the flowers, I need to make sure that um, they all line up nicely. So there's going to be a lot of pinning uh, to make sure that they stay in place. And then all we have left is the two pink end cap areas. These guys that run around along the sides. And a border that wraps it. And maybe some more embroidery. We'll see what happens. I'm not quite sure, but... Um, this is such a fun process and I hope you guys are enjoying watching this. Yeah, so let me kind of show you my next idea. So right now, I feel like this is every, it's like a very linear pattern. That's not what I'm going for. I want it to all blend together and work together harmoniously. I don't want just like a tribal section, a flower section, a flower section, a tribal section. I really want it to just flow and make a cohesive story. So what I've done is this, I've made a pattern and I'm gonna do 
another green root. And my idea for this is um, here in Tombstone, uh, I live in Sierra Vista, but in Tombstone, they have like the world's biggest tree rose thing. It's amazing, it's really cool. And so this is kind of what I'm going for. This is like the tree and they have pretty little birds that live there. And then this is like the tree and it's giving life to the roses. So that's kind of what I'm gonna do. So on the bases of each trees, I'm starting um, like a little rose vine coming off here here and then up here and up here i'm gonna have uh i think i'm not sure if i want to do four little birds or if i want to do just two i'm gonna cut out um four eight sixteen uh i think i'll probably cut out sixteen little birds and just kind of go from there and see how I like them. But yeah, that's the process so far. More cutting, uh, tons of sewing, and then uh, we'll move on to the next part. So I also want to talk about when you make a pattern and you have it uh, centered in a way that... Um... So let me just show you. Okay, so like this. This is how I need my pattern to sit. So I can trace it one of two ways. I can flip this fabric over and trace it directly on there like that and it would totally work. But it's hard to make a mark on something like this. So if you have to mark on the underside of your fabric, you have to make sure that you flip your pattern so that it comes out the way that you need it to. Um, that's kind of like the same thing that I had to do with these guys. Um, yeah, that would have sucked to have not have caught on onto that sooner, uh, because it took a long time to cut these out. Um, so I just, that's just, I guess, like a little tip there. Um, make sure that you're tracing it on the correct way for it to lie, because, these patterns are very directional. All right, this is where I'm at. I put in these centerpieces here. Um, I got them all stitched up and sewn on, and so now my next step is to make these guys. They're kind of like little, they kind of look like compasses to me, like north, east, southwest, and then north, what, north, east goodness, northeast, you know, and so on. That's kind of what they remind me of. And I'm going to stitch them onto a red. And what I'm thinking, I'm not sure, is putting them in these spaces. Well, if I do red, then I don't, definitely don't want it on red. What in the world is going on? Stop listening to me. Conrad sleeping. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to do this then. Huh. And I actually have the fabric on upside down, this yellow fabric, because it was just too bold. I didn't like that yellow and I really don't have any bright yellow anywhere on this piece. So I didn't want to start it with these guys. But what I was thinking is to do it one here, here, and one in that white spot, one here, opposite corners, you know, throughout the whole piece just to give it some unity. That way it still doesn't look section by section. Um, but we, I've got to think of a background to sew this on. I might just leave it the way it is and just sew it on like that. That would be a lot easier and a lot less time consuming because then I don't have to cut everything all over again. So yeah, we'll try that. We'll try that out. We'll see what happens. Oh my goodness, I got the, uh, what are they, what do I want to call them? They're like, to me, it's almost like a compass looking, like broken down compass kind of style. Um, 
medallion is a good one they're like little medallion things anyways i finally got them done i had to make 10 of them four for the bottom and then i ended up cutting two of them in half um so let me show you what i've done these are the little guys and I'll, I haven't sewn them on because I'm gonna do a purple border that's gonna clean up this edge. And so after I do that border, let me get this strap out of the way. After I do that border, then I can place these and make sure that they're nice and centered. We got a white string here. Make sure that they're nice and centered and uh, make them really shine. I love that it has the red on the background to pull in from the red from the center to, to make that red. Oh, hey Lumi to make the red uh, petal from the roses come out. Um, I also like the introduction of a light pale yellow because I'm going to be using these beautiful, cute little birdies. I, I have it on a batik fabric right now. Here, I'll put it on my leg, see if it'll focus. I have it on a batik fabric right now. This is the first one I drew out. I love the shape. I'm definitely going to... Uh, make a template for it, and then cut out a whole bunch of them. And put them on my little trees, and then maybe even just sporadically through the... Okay. Hey, you want your eyes cleaned? She needs her eyes cleaned. Um, yeah, so we're making headway. We're doing this. I, for a long time, I've been working on this project for like three weeks and I really felt like it was never ending. So uh, we'll get the purple on, we'll get the medallions cut on, we will get the birds cut out, and then one more big applique process, which is gonna be, um, I don't know if I have them over here. You'll see. They're just little geometric shapes that are gonna uh, encompass the background or uh, go around the um, border. Uh, and they'll, I'll be using the same fabrics that I've used in the center to really make things pop and make things look great. And then we're gonna do some fraying on the edges. I might tea dye this. I don't know, I'm just so excited. There's so many possibilities with this kind of tapestry. I'm just using what I have. I'm not going to the store, staying safe. And yeah, we're gonna get this done. All right, I got the strips cut out. I did one and a half inches for um, the strip width. So I'm not, you know, like usually if you cut a strip, you do one and a half inches, that strip's gonna end up being an inch when you sew it to two pieces of fabric, like in quilting. Um, I'm not doing that. But what I did want to do is I wanted to fold this fabric over because I want that extra bulk, that depth, um, because I feel like all the other fabrics I've been using are super thick fabrics and this fabric is cotton, which is great for doing borders because I know it doesn't stretch as much as like the knitted wool that I've been using. Uh, it will stretch if you pull it. I'm not going to be pulling it. Um, but at least it's not like uh, super stretchy, super pliable. So that's why I chose the purple cotton. And plus I have a ton of purple cotton. Um, so yeah, so just trying to use what I have. So here is a strip. I'm gonna get it laid out. I'm gonna roll it in half. I'm gonna iron it and then I'll pin it. And then I'm gonna do a decorative stitch on the sides. I think I'm gonna use the same decorative stitch that I did on the tree and we'll go from there. on um, and for this next part I'm gonna be switching my uh, sewing foot to the regular foot uh, during this process of making all these uh, crazy appliques I've just been using my free motion quilting foot 
Um, I like the see-through one because it actually gets down to the fabric and presses up. So I'm gonna switch it back to this guy and then we're gonna do the same decorative stitch that I did on the others, which is a 22. And I've got my um, quilting thread, so my stitches are gonna be really thick and they're really gonna pop and that's exactly what I want. You can use regular thread and it would look great. It's just gonna be thinner. So quilting thread is has a, I think it's like it has a smaller gauge, so therefore it's bigger, kind of like needles. Um, so yeah, it's gonna I think really make everything pop, and then we'll put on our little compass decal things, and then we're gonna cut and do more applique. Right. Applique. Okay. Applique. This is where we're at. We got the medallion on the end. The border is stitched on. And I think it looks great. I'll show you the border. I did a um, two kinds of decorative stitches. And then we got these little guys tacked on. And yeah, they're, I think it's looking pretty good. Uh, next part is doing this outside border. And then uh, we'll do some embroidery of the, um, Little birdies. Okay. All right, I finally cut out all the pieces I need for my final border. I did the dark blue and the red. I like the red pulling from the center. Um, that'll go all the way around, all the way around. Um, so what I have now, I just placed them down and now I need to pin them and then just do a quick stitch around each piece and then um, I'm thinking my next step is going to be uh, probably some like embroidery. I want to embroider some birds but it's going to be like a rough style embroidery. I'm not an excellent um, embroider sewer person. That's I have a hoop and a needle. That's how good I am. <laughs> I don't have anything special or any tips or tricks. Um, so I'm just going to probably whip stitch uh, in the shape of a bird and go from there. Tick tock, the clock is ticking. I don't know what I should do and I wish you would be right here with me. My mind is filled with pictures of when we used to dance But now I don't know where you are I miss you so bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that I see I've lost all my chances, I know that I am too late I'm thinking of you I'm thinking of you Thinking of you Wondering if you're thinking about me too Now it's too late Now it's too late I'm out of time But I'm still Thinking of you My heart keeps on bleeding I have scars, the ones that healing They're all there because of you Messed it up and I should have treated you much better So much better I miss you so bad, won't you come back to me? I've got you in my head, you're all that I see to the end to see the final result. 
I hope you enjoyed it. I also wanted to mention that I'm starting this YouTube channel to reach out to more people and uh, get to meet people online that are like-minded, that enjoy art and crafts. And I hope you guys like this. I hope you subscribe. I'm very new to this, so I'm sorry if the video footage isn't up to par. I'm learning, and uh, I just hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, thanks for all being my friend. Bye.